All right, this is my first take on this video. Uh -oh. I don't know, I keep having that message, but it just kind of reminds me how many takes I've done just in case I fuck something up. Uh, today I was gonna do a Linux distro tier list and full disclaimer at the beginning, I haven't used every single one of these distributions and some of them haven't worked for me, but I'm gonna try to rate them according to <laughs> the purpose I see in them. Um, we'll kind of change it up as we go because I don't really have a I don't really have any idea where I'm gonna put things right now uh, but I've been reading through them and I've been thinking of where I would put different things um, so right off the bat um, uh, uh, S tier is obviously best you know uh, D I'm going to use for I've never used this distribution and I it's I haven't used this distribution and I don't know anything about it so that would be Zorin and Peppermint um, and MX Linux I do know a bit about MX Linux um, but you know I'll try I'll try oh and KDE Neon of course um, I haven't used those as well as Endeavor and Elementary or NTX um, but, or Puppy actually, I have used Puppy once. Uh, but anyways, we'll try, we'll try. Um, so uh, we'll start off with NTX, which of course is pretty difficult. <laughs> uh, I'm actually gonna put this one in A, and the reason why is because, no, actually I'll move it up to S. I've never used it before, but the purpose it serves is not only do they have very good 32-bit support, um, so it's very useful for older computers, um, but they also don't use system D, which is also good for older computers At least in personal experience. I'm very anti system D. So of course I'm gonna put the non system D ones in that S tier, you know Arch Linux I'm gonna put in C tier. I fucking hate Arch Linux. Um I've already made a full video explaining why I hate Arch Linux. I don't think we need to go over that again uh, It's a rolling release that does rolling release really poorly. It's very unstable it, um it's only real selling point for me is that it installs really fast. I hate the AUR, I hate everything about it. Um, so, you know, and of course it uses systemd. CentOS, I'm going to put in, now some people don't like new CentOS and I'm gonna call this CentOS Stream because that's the one that currently exists. Um, but the reason I put it in A is because it's upstream from normal Red Hat and it doesn't require a commercial license. Um, so that's very useful for people that are trying to get into an enterprise setting, but they don't want, they don't need the enterprise support of Red Hat. Um, now source availability is also bad. Um, and we're going to talk about that eventually, I guess. But, um, I don't think. Uh, so, um, but anyways, um, I like the idea of having Red Hat without the license and being a bit upstream. Um, Fedora I'm going to put in the same tier for that reason. It's pretty stable. Um, it's again upstream Red Hat. It's also GNOME's testing ground and Wayland's testing ground, um, which makes it very useful. And I really do like a lot of the technology Red Hat makes and Fedora is where all that shit gets put in. So I'm putting CentOS and Fedora in the same tier. Uh, Debian, again, A tier because it is also rock solid. I don't like unstable, um, but I do like the stability of Debian. I like how easy it is to set up. I don't mind the NCurses installer. Um, and it, you know, it serves a decent purpose, you know? Elementary, I'm gonna put in C. Um, just because it really doesn't serve much of a purpose anymore. If you're really that fucking new to Linux, um, just use like Linux Mint or something. What, what does elementary do these days that makes it unique other than its interface? And honestly, who gives a shit about interface? Um, Endeavor, I'm going to put in B. I know that a lot of people like Endeavor. I've never used it. I've never really had a reason to use it, but I'm pretty sure it does things better than Arch. Um, I wish that it had been zero Linux because um, I actually do know a bit more about that one. But Endeavor, I'm going to assume, has stuff like holds back Grub packages that are problematic or doesn't use Grub at all. Um, it makes Arch more user friendly, so it's at least a bearable distribution and hopefully makes it a bit more stable. 
Uh, FreeBSD obviously goes on S tier because it is widely used in like server environments. Um, the stuff like Netflix, you know, FreeBSD is uh, your like last holdout from Linux now. Um, and I really, I really like the idea of that. I like its maintainers. I generally like the FreeBSD team. Um, I can't get it personally to work on a lot of my systems, uh, even though I kind of wanted to run it on my MacBook if Void didn't work. Uh, I've always dreamed of having a FreeBSD running desktop, um, and I just haven't gotten around to it yet. Gen 2, I'm also going to put an S tier, not only because, again, doesn't have to use systemd, even though it is officially supported, I know I'm going to make that argument a lot, but Gen 2 is also extremely customizable. Um, I've run Gen 2 for a few weeks before, and then my fstab broke fs tab whatever um and now i know how to fix that um so if i were to ever run gen 2 again i would be able to do that and i really like it uh, i had a blast running gen 2 i think every linux nerd should run gen 2 at some point or another kali linux i'm also putting in c because um while it does pack a bunch of bloat that um you know pen testers would like um it's also not a very secure operating system um because of all those features, you know? So it's not particularly secure. It's not really suitable as a daily driver and it comes with a lot of load. There is no reason to install Kali. Uh, KDE Neon, I'm also going to put in A for the same reason as Fedora because this is KDE's testing ground. So it actually serves a decent purpose. Um, would it be a good desktop distribution? Probably not. Um, Manjaro, I am also putting in C because it, it does everything Arch does, but worse. Um, it's one benefit, and I ar highly argue that it's a benefit, is because um, they hold back packages for two weeks, so you potentially don't have as many breakages, but it breaks anyways. So it really doesn't matter. Linux Mint, I'm going to put in B tier because they have a problem right now where they're kind of split between Ubuntu and Debian. And I don't really, I wish that, that, it seems like they're trying to transition to a Debian base. And once they do, I would recommend it a lot more, but some of their packages are way too old now. Like their Mooter package was a huge problem for a while. Like if you were alt tabbing while gaming, it would like freeze up your desktop. It was annoying. Um, like it would just tank your frame rate. Um, it's decent as a new user experience. It's not, it's very stable, but they're also, Cinnamon isn't really a selling point for me because it doesn't really do a whole lot that XFC doesn't do or Monte or Gnome, whatever, you know, KDE. Cinnamon isn't really all that important. MX Linux, uh, this one I've never used. I know it's really good for lightweight distributions, but I don't know enough about it. Kind of like NTX, like, the only reason I put NTX in this tier is because it's, um, I know that it's good for 32-bit computers as well as it has no systemd. Um, MX Linux I don't know enough about. OpenBSD S tier for the same reason as um, FreeBSD and also because FreeBSD and OpenBSD are very different projects. Um, and I find that kind of important for people to know is that while the base is the same, kind of they are they have split development very hugely and i've always dreamed of having a open bsd system as well but i can't get it working on my hardware right now it'll boot and everything unlike FreeBSD, i can't even get my keyboard to work on FreeBSD, but open bsd i can't get my audio working and i have the same problem with ghost bsd and luna bsd Anyways, FreeBSD's got issues. OpenBSD has less issues, but um, it's not it's not quite there yet for what I need. Peppermint OS I've also never used. Um, I know people say it's great, and I'm sure it's great. I think it's supposed to be a Chrome OS um, kind of thing where it tries to have a Chrome OS like interface, which is cool, but I don't really see the point in that. Pop OS I'm going to put in B. Um, I've used Pop OS. I've run it on friends computers before uh it's fine this is ubuntu with uh, once they get their new fucking desktop environment going which is not going to be gnome i guess because gnome is really hard to work with um it's fine you know you can use it same resistance mint yeah it's it's fine for a new user uh puppy linux i've also used but i don't really understand it well enough i know it's meant for like super deep loaded computers 
like ones that are ancient and but I don't know enough about it um, I also don't know enough about its package manager um, because that was the one snag I hit was I didn't read the documentation on how to install shit react OS um, really I'm gonna put it in D because um, I know about it I've used it um, but it's also very very alpha software and I doubt it's ever gonna be finished so who the fuck knows you know um, if you need to run Windows applications you can also run wine you know I assume Re react OS will do some things better than wine but um, I don't know enough about it it looks really cool though I like the real Windows like interface uh, Red Hat I'm going to put in B as well whereas I put CentOS and Fedora in A Red Hat's in B and the reason is obviously that Red Hat does a lot of fuckery with their enterprise customers and I just don't like that but it is also widely used in enterprise and that's why I'll probably put Ubuntu in there as well as just for enterprise use um, but if I can I'd rather use the free version because um, I just don't need enterprise support and those that do, there's other options, you know, like OpenSUSE or, um, or Ubuntu. Slackware I also don't know enough about. I've been meaning to run it for a while, and people say it's great um, with, like, Slack builds and all that, um, but I've never used it. I don't, I don't really have an... I guess I have plans on trying it, but I don't know when. Um, it'll just depend. Solus, uh, I really wish this was in a higher tier. I'm gonna put it in B. And the reason why is because they they do a lot of things that I'm interested in. Um, like their new user repository is supposed to be really neat. Their, um, what they're doing with immutable distros is also really neat, but they also haven't done it yet. Um, I also really like that they're an uh, independent distribution, uh, which is always really cool to see when it's not based on something. OpenSUSE I'm putting in A even though I wouldn't personally run it. I've had too many issues with OpenSUSE. I kind of don't like how their package manager works, how it deals with conflicts very ungracefully. Um, I know I know how to fix it but it's just kind of annoying. Using like a lot of vendor change and zipper is really slow and it's but the snapshots are really cool. I really like that. I don't mind system D on this even though it's a rolling release because it does it really st it's very stable um, and it has snapshots in case something does get screwed up they also have a slow roll now which will be a good middle ground where it'll be kind of like Banjaro holding packages for two weeks but backporting security fixes um, so OpenSeas is really cool um, I've used it before I tried to run it long term but I just couldn't get into it uh, but it's still, it's there for those who want to try it, and it's a very good distribution. Ubuntu I'm going to put in B for the same reason as Red Hat. It's good for enterprise, but it's also super bloated now. Um, but it will run for a new user. Um, and I don't mind their implementation of GNOME. Um, it's just it boots like really slowly, even on high-end hardware, and that's really fucking annoying. Uh, snaps are also kind of garbage, you know, but they do work for the most part. Um, and they are getting faster. There's less like um, performance issues with Snap. So what they're doing is pretty cool. Um, and a lot of distributions base themselves not on Debian but Ubuntu, which is what makes Mint really interesting, is that they try to base on both even though they clearly favor Debian. Avoiding putting an S tier, of course, because I fucking use it. It's really nice. I like it. Um, it doesn't come with a whole lot set up out of the box, but it's really easy to learn. Um, it's independent, so I, you know that knocks it up a notch as well. Uh, no system D, of course. That's a, that's that's kind of the, anything in S tier doesn't have system D. Um, and I just really like it. It's been rock solid for me. It's the only thing that'll run on my MacBook besides Manjaro, and I fucking hate Manjaro. Um, so Void can't recommend it enough. It's it's really cool. Um, if you ever get the chance, try Void Linux. Um, Zorin I also don't know anything about. Um, if I remember, it's the one that has a premium version, like a paid license or something. So I don't really know if it serves any purpose, but I've never used it, I think, because it has a paid version. Um, so I just don't know enough about it. Um, but that's really about it. That's kind of that's my tier list, in case anybody actually gave a shit. Um, 
there's a few of them I might change around if I were to like give it a second thought like I might put if I learned about MX Linux or Puppy Linux I'd probably throw them in A or S tier honestly um, just for being super lightweight and being pretty user friendly you know um, but I don't know enough about them so they're in D um, yeah that's really all I can think of for for these distributions you know that's it thanks <laughs>